The original Dark Souls 2 pre-release trailers had a much greater focus than the final game on using darkness as a gameplay mechanic, with the player needing to find light sources to proceed through otherwise pitch black areas. With the increased adoption of raid facing this generation, do you think that a contemporary dark fantasy hack and slash game could now be viable using the interplay of raid faced light sources and darkness as a core part of the gameplay? rather than raid facing being primarily aesthetic? Or do you think developers will be too concerned about potential complaints that the game is too dark by people who <laughs> might be playing in suboptimal lighting conditions, similar to the criticisms Doom 64 and 3 had on release? I'll go to you for, for, on this one first, John. It's an interesting idea, right? And I'm kind of thinking back to the original Alan Wake, where um, right. I just think that the lighting mechanic could have been used to produce much more interesting gameplay because it was that good. Yeah, I agree with this. Uh, but before talking about that, I wanted to mention Dark Souls 2 specifically because they talked about those pre-release trailers. I was fortunate enough to play a build of Dark Souls 2 way pre-release at Gamescom one year that still had right. more of that stuff in it. And it was quite different compared to what actually shipped. Uh, so that existed and it was running on a PS3, no less. I was a PS3, PS3 dev kit, so I, too, was disappointed that they decided to change the whole way they did lighting in that game, uh, which is why you're right. Now that we have more advanced lighting features, I think it would be neat to see developers leverage them more uh, within games. But as he mentions Doom, Doom 3 specifically, uh, a lot of people don't seem to like that. I thought it was great in Doom 3, uh, but... I can understand why people may have been frustrated. Um, so that's tricky. You want to see it done in a way that's interesting, actually take advantage of the properties of light, but you have to do it in such that considers that some people may find that confusing, annoying, or ch just difficult. Uh, and also take into account other displays. Like I've talked about this recently, but because of the prevalence of LCDs, dark games became difficult after Doom 3. After about 2005, yeah. LCDs basically became the de facto PC monitor, and even on TVs often. Black level's very poor, you just get backlight bleed, and as a result, dark games like Doom 3 look really, really bad, because any area that's bathed in darkness is just backlight. Uh, and we saw at least a decade of games just move away from this as a result. Now we're back to... HDR displays, we got OLEDs everywhere, you know, even LCDs have gotten much better in this regard. Uh, new technologies allowing really dramatic real-time lighting. You don't have to rely as much on baking anymore. So I do think there's a ton of potential here to really push things and I hope to see it. I just don't know specifically how it would be used without thinking about it a little bit more. Yeah, for, for Dark Souls, it really was a navigation mechanic, like actually seeing where you're going and uh, like you said, it could be annoying for a lot of people. I think, I think the reason why they dropped it was performance, probably back then, because uh, I do not imagine the PS3 was holding up very well. Uh, John, do you, if you recall, uh, that uh, Dark Souls Two demo, I remember it running just fine in the okay. demo. It was it was completely okay from what I recall. I did not find was it was actually on a triple. It was on a real triple dev kit, uh, mm -hmm. and you could tell because it had the X and B menu, and the system was sitting right there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I think that I feel like that area must have been some sort of like vertical slicey kind of thing that they ultimately changed when the entire game was built a different Came. way somehow. Yes. Uh, I, I want to see it again because I, I can't remember just how close it was to those original trailers, what changed. But I, I recall thinking like, wow, this, it was that specific section that we always saw in those comparison shots where you go down and down the steps and, and the, it's like that's super dark awesome. and you yeah. have a torch and the torch is casting shadows. And I remember being really impressed by that. Uh, and then obviously yeah. the final game did not have that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I love that kind of stuff. It's just a matter of making compelling gameplay around it. And I think um, with the baseline of current-gen consoles being capable of uh, RT to a certain degree, it, it's totally possible. I don't know if it's going to be in the dark fantasy genre, though. I think, um, I don't know if it's the, the genre right now to be pushing tech necessarily. So he mentions Doom 3, and actually one of the coolest things recently, I've been playing the Doom 3 Quest version, right? Which translates mm -hmm. everything yeah. into VR. That allows you to use the flashlight and your weapon kind of separately. 
And mm. it makes being able to separate those two and, you know, use your flashlight while also using a weapon completely transforms it and made me think, mm. oh, yeah, like real time lighting in VR is amazing because you have so much more control over it and it just feels natural because you're exploring these dark environments. And if you had a real flashlight, you sort of behave in the game as you would in real life. Right. And it's, it's, I think that's compelling. 